But this morning I want to give you a key. And if you take this key that I'm going to share with you for your family and for your life, everything around you will prosper. Everything around you shall be blessed. And I know many times people, when they hear the word prosper, they just hear prosperity preacher. So for those, may you receive poverty. I'm serious. Like people want to say, oh, prosperity preacher. Do you want me to preach death? When Jesus says that we shall have life and life abundance, the Bible says that God delights in the prosperity of His saints. So that means God wants you to prosper in all things. And there's specific keys that He has placed in our lives to be able to walk in the prosperity that He has caused us to have. The price that Jesus paid with His blood is for you to have life and life abundance. Are you with me? But many people write motivational books and motivational stories and we all go to these things and get all hyped up thinking that this will change my marriage this will change my husband this will change my wife this will change my business but how many of you know it is only temporal that you get changed how many of you ever been to a business seminar and that night, the next morning, you wake up, you are so excited to start a business. You are telling everyone, listen, I'm registering this company, this thing. And then after a few weeks or a few days, maybe sometimes, a few hours sometimes, depending on how good the motivational speaker was, it all just, shh. And you wasted money, you wasted time, you wasted energy. How many of you can concur on that? Because that motivational speaking is not what will really will help you. The key that I'm going to share with you this morning is the key that you need and I need in my life. I've been through many battles in my life, many seasons of trials and tribulations, having much, having little. But one thing I can say is that this key that I'm going to share with you this morning is what carried me through all these seasons. And through these seasons, I was not shaken, I was not moved by anything or by anyone or by anyone's thoughts or sayings because many of us when we go through a difficult time or a season of testing we get shaken sometimes you feel rejected sometimes you want to speak to me and or your eager bleeder and they're just ignoring you for that week specifically the week that you needed them to speak to you and then you get angry and you feel but god if these people are really loving me, why are they not sending me a message? Why are they not comforting me? My question to you this morning is, is the Holy Spirit not your comforter? Have you replaced the Holy Spirit with man? There's a place where only God can be with you. When you go through a storm or a season of testing or wilderness or of a shaping, it is only the Holy Spirit that can help you, no one else. There were, there were seasons in my life where I felt alone, where I felt there was no one with me but Him. And guess what? It was more than enough for me. But there's a key that I'm going to share with you this morning. And this key will help your family. It will help your business. It will help every area of your life if you apply this key. Say with me, I have to apply this key. Just hearing a good message is not going to change your life. You're going to have to apply it. I personally believe in my life. I've seen bad things. I've seen good things. But one thing I really believe is every marriage can work if both of the parties die to self and pay the price. There's not one marriage that I believe cannot be restored if both parties are not willing to die to self and be selfless and not selfish. Are you with me? But the key that I want to share with you this morning, and I want you to bear with me, that you don't think weird things. Because sometimes the enemy will take a word that God has given us and make it as if it's his word, that we as Christians are too afraid to touch that word because what if it is witchcraft? The key I want to give you this morning is meditation. Some people call it a silent prayer, but I want to call it what it is this morning. 
meditation. Meditation is not evil. Meditation is the plans for God has for you. It is a key that he has given you to destroy the plans and the work of the enemy. It is a key that God has given you to build your husband, to build your wife, to build your children up. It is through the key of meditation. And we can see this all from the Old Testament right through to the New Testament. One thing that is still sticking is meditation. And now the world is taking it and saying, oh, it is evil. It is new age. No, it's old age. It was in the Old Testament already. Joshua 1 verse 8 says this. This book of the laws are not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night. It doesn't say if you are a pastor, you shall meditate on it. It says you shall meditate on this word. Not if you want to. Say with me, not if I want to. It is a commandment from God that you shall meditate on his word. Why? Because the moment you meditate on his word, you transformed into that same word. Are you with me? And it goes on and it says that you may observe to do according to all that is written for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will not say maybe it says you will have good success. These days we will Google and we will ask AI and whoever we will ask some business tycoon how do I make my business successful? You go to a psychologist. How can I have a successful family? Here's the key God has given you. Meditate on his word and he will make your way prosper and you shall be blessed in all things. Are you with? Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? So how are you going to receive courage and be strong? Through meditating on his word, no matter what you go through. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Meditation is not new age or demonic, no. Meditation is from God. It is God's plan and a key that he has given you to be able to fulfill the plans for your life and for your family. Because the enemy is always coming with voices, are you with me? Always coming with accusations. But the moment you make the word of God your foundation, no matter what storm you're facing, you'll be able to stand. Who is our foundation? Jesus Christ. Is Jesus not the word and the word is with Jesus? So we have to make the word of God our foundation as Christians. We cannot allow Instagram and TikTok to be our foundation or even my preaching to be your foundation. Your foundation must be the word of God. Are you with me? Because some people worship their pastor more than they worship Jesus. And it will not be here like that. We are just puppets that he is using for his kingdom and for his glory. The word of God is supposed to be your foundation. Because what if God allows me or tells me to reject you for the next year? Will you still serve him or not? Just a question. Some people, maybe not, they will think, My God, why have you forsaken me? Not knowing that he has never left you. But it allowed you to go through a season of loneliness that you can find the one that you were created to serve and that is not man. Are you with me? The only way in time meditation becomes unholy or demonic is when you're not meditating on the word and the plans of God for your life. Then yes, meditation is wrong. If you meditate anything contrary to that, the plans of God for your life and the word of God, yes, don't meditate on that. That becomes evil. And many people say, but pastor, I'm too afraid to meditate. Good news and bad news, you're already meditating. My question is, on what are you at this moment meditating? What is the thing that consumes your mind right now? What is the meditation that you have regarding your husband, regarding your wife, regarding your business, regarding your future, regarding South Africa? What is your meditation or your pattern of thought that you have regarding your circumstances? Because you're already meditating, you're just not calling it that. 
the things that's not departing your heart, that you're constantly thinking of, you're meditating upon that thing. And that is why the next scripture is very important, yet it's a small scripture. Because meditation and thinking is working hand by hand. And the Bible says in Proverbs 23, it says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Have you maybe not created the monster that you're married with because of your thinking? I'm just asking a question. I'm not accusing anyone. Because we as people have this weakness of looking for the mistake always by someone else. Never taking responsibility for our own lives because Jesus has paid the price. We think we can just do what we want to know. With great authority comes great responsibility. The moment you find a wife or you find a husband or you start making a family, children, there's a greater responsibility that comes upon your life. But this word meditation is something that will make your family rise or fall. What are you meditating on daily? And this can also be seen in the New Testament. We just read in the Old Testament. But let's see what the New Testament says about meditation. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren. How many of you are brethren, children of God? So this is for, you say with me, it's for me. Whatever thing are true. Listen to that. Whatever thing are true. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, and whatever thing are pure, whatever thing are lovely, and whatever thing is of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any, anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. But my question is, what thoughts do you have regarding your family? What thoughts do you have regarding your own life? Is it praiseworthy? Is it true? Is it good? Because if it is not good and it's not praiseworthy, why do you allow yourself to meditate on the things that is contrary to the word of God for you and your family? That is why many people are going and facing the things they are facing because they are meditating on things that are not good, that are not true, that are not noble, that are not praiseworthy. And that is why they begin to receive what they meditate on because as you think, so are you. Your mind is a very powerful thing that God has given you and blessed you with. Are you with me? If God has good thoughts to, towards you and your family, who are we? To not have good thoughts regarding our family. And I know some of you that are in good marriages. Praise the Lord. But there's many people that need to hear this message this morning. If God has a good thoughts and plan for your husband. Or God has a good plan and thoughts for your wife or for your children. Why do we think so negative over our spouses daily? If God's plan is to prosper you. And a good, have a good life. Why do we still remember and meditate on the past mistakes? Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the force that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That is what your mind is supposed to be regarding your husband, regarding your children, and regarding yourself. Because many times... We don't have such pure thoughts about ourselves. We think we are not good enough. We think we are unholy. We are unrighteous. Yet the word of God says you are holy because of Jesus Christ. Yet the word of God says you are righteous because of Jesus Christ. Yet because you have made a mistake, now you meditate on that mistake thinking that you're not good enough.
when your husband makes a mistake, or maybe your wife makes a mistake, or say something that they're not supposed to say, or act a way they're not supposed to act, why do we relive that moment through our meditation? Why do we relive that moment through thinking and pondering on that thing the whole time? Where we are supposed to ponder and meditate on the word of God and the plans of God for your husband or your wife. When we imagine something, it is though that it really happens. Our physical bodies, our bodies do not understand the difference between imagination and the physics. There's not a difference. And that is why many people, they will imagine they're the, the fastest runner and they will practice and practice thinking that there's no one that can beat them. And then they become the best. Because your mind has the power and your imagination has the power to create your future. Because you make the word of God your foundation. Are you with me? And that is why it's important to make the word of God your thoughts. To force yourself to meditate against every negative thought that the enemy is throwing at you. Because all of us can just be transparent with one another. Daily, there's force that comes to your mind that you feel, but I don't want to think of this. I don't want to act like this, but why is it happening? Let's just be honest. And when those thoughts come, it is fine because they will come. But it doesn't mean you have to meditate on those words and allow those words to consume your mind and consume your heart. Are you with me? Because the moment you consume that with your heart, that is what you will believe and that is what will happen in your life. Are you with me? We need to think of God's plans for our lives and His promises over our children and over our families. It is also very important that when we meditate on the Word of God, that we pray in tongues. The baptism of tongues, it is for every Christian. It is not just for some or for pastors. No, there's different tongues that you get. You get tongues of angels, tongues of men. You get praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. But every Christian must be able to pray in tongues because the Bible says when we pray in tongues, we speak, do not speak to man, but we speak mysteries unto God. Are you with me? And when you pray in tongues, the Bible says you edify, you build yourself up. Why would God give his one child a key to build himself up and say to another child, no, you can't build yourself up. Be weak where you are right now. Religion has lied to us so much. And that is, I believe, why Paul, no matter what storm, no matter what thing he was facing, he had peace because the Bible says that I pray in tongues more than you all. How many of you want peace in your life? How many of you want peace in your marriage and in your family? Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. That word mind is yes sir, yes sir, and it means imagination. So it says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose imagination is stayed on you. Are you with me? It is time that we get ourselves out of the pit of our mind, and make the word of God our reality. Your mind is a battlefield. But because the enemy knows that if he controls your mind, he controls your life. We need to purify our mind. I have this thing and maybe it's a religion I started myself. I don't know. But many times when I just feel the enemy is attacking me. I'll just say. Because I understand the, the finished work of the blood. And I understand how powerful the blood is. That I'll just say, Father, right now I wash my spirit soul body and mind clean with the blood of jesus christ and it's such simple prayer sometimes that we think is insignificant sometimes we think oh i need to go and pray and fast for 10 years for this thing to overcome no you can surrender to jesus and just say here i am i wash me clean and then when i pray like that i imagine physically blood washing me clean the blood of jesus and today we're going to take communion. And I want to pray as we take communion that God will wash your mind, your heart, 
your memory clean from all abuse and all hurt and all shame and all guilt because and every negative meditation that you have meditated over your life and over your family are you with me your mind is one of the strongest weapons against the enemy have you ever seen in your life the moment people reject you or say something against you it can make you change the moment you believe it many people think you receive rejection through someone saying something against you or doing something against you come here with your phone so now i'm standing here I'm not meditating on the Word of God. I'm a normal carnal Christian that's a baby in Christ. The Word of God is there and it's just picking up dust in my cupboard. Now, one of my friends come and he tells me, yes, but you are fat. He's laughing at me. Telling me, listen, you will not achieve anything. This mistake that you have done, how could you have done it? Now I get rejection. Why? Because I start meditating on his words. I start meditating and taking in what he has said. And his word now become our foundation and not the word of God. Many people say, oh, but this person has rejected me. I have rejection. My question is, why have you allowed people's voices above the word of God in your life? If I'm a Christian that's full of the Holy Spirit, full of the word of God, he can stand and throw rocks until he is blue. I will just stand like this. I stand, I stand in all of you. I will not care. But the reason why you are so affected by the storms and the things that people say about you is because you meditate on their words more than you meditate on the word of God. Maybe your spouse told you that you're, you're worthless. Or maybe your spouse said something in a moment of weakness against you. And that thing you're thinking over and over and over again. And that is why you become who you are. What do we meditate on regarding our family? If we can break someone down through changing their thoughts about themselves, how much more can we use that same powerful brain and mind that Jesus has given us to build one another up? You can speak a word continue to someone when they are weak and guess what? They will become strong. Because you are special, no. It is because they put their faith in your words and in the word of God. The moment you prophesy some over someone, it is not the words that you say that is so powerful, it is them believing the words that you're prophesying that makes it so powerful. So how much more powerful will it be if we start speaking the word of God over our spouses and speaking the word of God over our children and our businesses and over our families and continually meditate on those things that is good towards them, that is pleasant and that is praiseworthy and stop meditating on the negative. How many women, and I know they say women have a memory like an elephant. And all the men say, hallelujah, pastor. You have heard my prayers. You can forget about something as a husband of something you did 10 years ago, 7 years, 5 years ago. But just wait for that moment. Job, it's the same. Do you remember? 1992, you did the same thing. I'm like. I thought the Bible says you forgive and forget. I thought the Bible says love keeps no record of wrong. I love my husband, but he's... But stop. The moment you say, I love, there's no more rec keeping record of wrong. That's what the Word of God says. Your own imagination and your own feelings will say, Oh, but pastor. You have a special mind that God has given you. You can choose. Are you going to use that mind to break down someone, 
to break your family down, to destroy your family and go through the cycles as your forefathers, or you can use that same mind and brain to say, God, I'm going to build something for the future that will be able to give you glory and honor. Are you with me? <clears throat> Philippians 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So that means the same mind that Jesus had, we have and has the capability to have inside of us. Jesus had peace no matter what storm he was facing. Because he had this understanding and this mindset that this too shall pass. Yet sometimes when things happen in our lives, we make that our everything. When things go wrong or when things doesn't happen or as we have planned it and we constantly meditate on those things yet Jesus knew that this too will pass his disciples saw all the miracles they saw all the healings raising their dead but the moment it was a small storm they were freaked out yet Jesus was sleeping because he understood that all things work out for the better that loves the Lord so if you can know that all things are going to work out for the better, why are we pondering and meditating on the negative the whole time? Let's say your husband now did well for the last few months and now suddenly you come home. He had a lot of prayers at home. I'm not saying he's allowed to do this. Listen what I'm saying. You get at home, this guy is as drunk as can be. Now you as a wife has the opportunity Am I going to break this broken man? Or am I going to use this opportunity to build him through the mind that Christ has given me? Am I going to speak life? Am I going to speak the word of God? Or am I going to speak what my flesh wants to speak? And this is how simple it is to build or break a marriage. Because the moment when someone is at a weak point, it is a moment where you have the opportunity to build them up and not break them down. Because when we go through seasons of difficulties or when someone is going through a season of weakness or character shaping or whatever you want to call it, your words stick like glue. But when you go through a season or you see someone else of a weakness, it is time that you and I must have the mind of Christ and Refer back to the word of God that is our foundation. Sometimes we act so spiritual, but the moment we need to be spiritual, we become fleshly because we think the fight is against the flesh and blood, not understanding the fight is against spiritual things, not physical things. There's a reason why your husband is doing what he's doing. There's a reason why your wife is acting the way she's acting. And you have the key inside of you to build them up and your family to be built up. Are you with me? There's so much power in your mind. Say there's power in my mind. And I know many of you think this is new age. Wait, the Bible is speaking for itself. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? So the Bible here says there is someone, because it says who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. So there's someone that has the capability to know the mind of the Lord that he may instruct God. So you can tell God what he has to do over your family, over your business, over your children. And then the Bible goes on and says, but we have the mind of Christ. To think of this, this scripture shows you the capability that you have inside of you according to the Bible. That you have the power through your mind to instruct God. How much more authority do you think you have over your family? If your mind has the capability to instruct God and move God to do something for you, how much more power does your mind have to instruct your family's life? To instruct where you're going as a family. But we are so quick to say negative things. That's why I don't look at any news. The only news that I need is the good news of Jesus. Because the things that goes on around me will not touch me. Because I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I am already seated in heavenly places. 
So storms can come, things can come, calamity can come. It has no effect on me as Stefan Boerta. And it's not supposed to have an effect on you and your family. Because you are a spiritual being. How can a spiritual being allow physical things to affect them? We have all authority over the things around us. Jesus came and he given us, he paid the price that you and I can again get all authority and dominion. Yet the moment something happens in the physical, we use the weapon that God has given us to destroy and not to build up. There is a battle for you and your, against your family, but you will not fail because you have the power to overcome. No matter what the enemy throws at you, you have the power to overcome. It is, say with me, a choice. If you and your spouse this morning can make it a season of God, we are going to start reading your word. We're going to start meditating on your word and your plans over our lives and over our family. I can guarantee you, your life will never be the same again. I can guarantee you, you will not divorce. I'll guarantee you, financially you will be blessed. I can guarantee you that you will have peace. Why? Because his word becomes your foundation. Not what he does, what he says, what he says, what he does. But the word of God will become your foundation. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 says, I'm just going to go faster now, so just be fast with the scriptures. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 says, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in the God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. Casting down arguments, not causing arguments. And all the people say, Hallelujah. So you have power in you not to cause arguments, but to cast them down. And every high thing that is exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So everything that lifts itself higher than the word of God must be cast down. Oh, my husband did this, cast it down. My wife did this, cast it down. I have done this, cast it down under the blood of Jesus. See yourself the way that Jesus see you. See your spouse the way Jesus see them. And build them up to become that person. Are you with me? Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience to Christ. It means to bring every word captive to the word of God. The imagination is not carnal. It is a spiritual thing. It is a spiritual battle that we find that we are fighting and we think it is a carnal battle. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. We want success, we want to prosper, we want to have peace, yet we don't want to take the time to read the Word of God and meditate on it. The moment you want to speak against your husband or your wife or your children or against yourself or against your business, make sure when your mouth opens up, it is the Word of God that comes out and not your opinions or what other people's opinions about your husband, yourself or your business or your family. Let us meditate on the Word of God and let that not depart from our lips. And this is not something that God is saying if you want to. It says... This book of the law shall not. It is a commandment. I think sometimes we try to make Christianity in life too much difficult. And that is why we struggle. It is the basic things that will make us rise as families and as people. It is returning back to Jesus Christ and His Word and allowing the Holy Spirit to help us because we will still make mistakes. Don't think after this morning your husband's going to be perfect or your wife is going to be perfect. No, but you can help them from today. The moment that they hit a weakness, you can help them to lift them and not to push them down. Are you with me? 
Romans 4 verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of God, whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they do. How do you call something that does not exist to exist? How do I imagine Dylan's phone is right now in my hand? I imagine it and then I speak it. Dylan's phone is in my left hand right now. If he's not rebellious. But how did it get here? I first imagined it. And then I declared the things that are not as if it is. So maybe you see in your husband, you see in your wife. You see, you guys care more about the phone. Because you're like, oh. But you know that is not the plan for your family and for yourself. Why don't you take a step back and say, God, I know the plans that you have for me. Now I will imagine it the way Jesus did and I will call the things which are not so it's not there. As if they are there and it shall become there. But it will take you imagination. It will take you to take your mind off of what your spouse is doing right now and say, God, I'm not going to see what I see here, but I'm going to see what your word says. Even though I see this is not how my husband or my wife or myself are, I'm going to imagine myself to be that person. And through prayer and through your word, I'm going to declare your word over that person, over myself, that I can become that person. Are you with me? Imagination is not demonic. Because why did God give you imagination? So did God make you demonic from birth? Please, can we not be stupid? Common sense. Imagination is not enemy. These days we everything new age, new age. Luckily, women are yes, I can't say what I wanted to say. Cause man. Imagination is not evil. Because how does God cause those things which do not exist? How does he call something that does not exist? So there's nothing. It's not like, oh, I'm calling this cloth to come to me. No, there's no cloth. Now I imagine it and I'm calling it to existence. And that is how you have to see your family and your husband. Don't look at the things that you have. Look at the things that you want to have of your family and start speaking the word of God and see that it will come to fulfillment. Are you with me? Who contrary to hope, verse 18, in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. So it's not too late for you and your family. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. So there's a double jeopardy that they have. But the promise of God is yes and amen. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he has promised, he was able to perform. How many promises has God given you and your family? Are you convinced with all surety that will come to pass because God said it. Many times we want to go from conference to conference, from sermon to sermon to get a prophetic word. And I love prophetic words, so don't get me wrong. But why do we always need new prophetic words if we have the word of God as our yes and our amen? It is because we start meditating on our mistakes or we start meditating on things that are not the word of God or the promise of prophetic words that we received before. But we start meditating on what we are doing right now. And then we think, oh, but now I need another prophetic word to get me out of this pit. No, you need to get your head out of the sand like a ostrich. 1 Timothy 1 verse 18 says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy. It's a commandment. It's a charge. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecy 
privilege He made concerning you? What prophetic word have you received over your life? What prophetic word have you received over your family? And if you say, I've never received a prophetic word, it is just because you have never read the word of God. Because the word of God is full of promises for you and your family. So what promises God has given you? Oh, but God, I don't see the financial breakthrough. I don't see the change in my husband. I don't see the change in my wife. Why put the blame on God when he has given you all the authority and all the power? And it goes on and says, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. The word of God is a prophetic word for you and I. And we have to make a warfare against any other thought or any other word that comes against us. We have to break it down with the word of God. The word of God is supposed to be our yes and our amen. And that is on what we're supposed to meditate. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. The word meditation means to consider deeply, to reflect upon, to resolve in the mind. We have all have heard this saying, you are what you eat. How many of you have heard that? You are what you eat. And it's not false, it's true. You are what you eat. That's why I like water, because I like sushi. I'm joking. But you are what you eat. In Revelation, John ate the word of God. And it was sweet as honey to his lips. But my question is, whose negative reports or negative thoughts have you eaten? What situation made you to eat it that it becomes you? Ezekiel 3 verse 1 says, Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat the scroll. And go speak the to the house of Israel, so I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly, and fill your stomach with the scroll that I give you. So I ate, and it was in my mouth like honey, in sweetness. You can only prophesy the word that you have already eaten of God. Many of you are speaking fleshly things of your family, because you have not eaten the word of God for your family. You have not eaten the word of God for your circumstances. You're not eating the word of God for your situation that you're facing. And yet you just want to speak, speak, speak. Not understanding it is vain, it is carnal, it is powerless. There's a key that I can give you and that is the key is study the word of God. It is not a history book that's going to bore you. It is a book that is powerful and living, sharper than any two-edged sword. If you have been in any of our deliverance services, you will see the Word of God is not something to be played with, but it's a weapon. And the moment we meditate on the Word of God like Ezekiel did, guess what? We can start prophesying. And when we prophesy, life will come to your family. Jeremiah 15 verse 16 says, Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. If you want joy in your life, it is found in the word of God. It is found in meditating in the word of God. It is not found in your spouse. Even though my spouse is very good, she makes me rejoice a lot. But the true joy comes from God and his word. Proverbs 4 verse 20 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. How do you let words depart from your eyes? Isn't it something that goes in your ears? Anyone? How can you see words? If I say, Dylan, you're going to preach with the glory of God. You see it through preaching through four thousands how do you see it with your eyes through your imagination so what words and what have you imagined of your family that you have spoken it's very important it says do not let do not do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart for they are like 
to those who find him and health to all their flesh. You can even receive healing through meditating on the word of God. 